<laughs> I'm Anne McElhenney. And I'm Phelan McAleer. You know, we, we have big news. Uh, there's big news coming out about the Roe v. Wade decision. Uh, but we have big news as well to, to uh, sort of accompany that decision. We're releasing a, a, a true crime podcast on the story of Kermit Gosnell, America's biggest serial killer. Called Serial Killer, a true crime podcast. Yes, so it's, it's, it's a story of Kermit Gosnell, six episodes, interviews with victims, interviews with, with investigators, detectives, everything. We're going to talk more about it later and you're going to hear clips from it. But this is going, this is going to set the true crime world on fire because this, at the end of the day, Gosnell was a serial killer and a murderer. And we're going to talk more about that later. What else is on the show, Anne? So remember when we exposed the Obama bros for using the C word to describe a female Democrat senator? Well, finally, mm -hmm. they have deigned to address the story. And apologies all around. Not so much. Not, no, the, the being leftist means you never have to apologize. And Esquire magazine, the ultra woke magazine for men, uh, tell us what all men should know about a post row world. And you know what? It's not. They're not encouraging responsibility anyway. So uh, we'll we'll have a look at that. And in a world run by experts, should you really take guidance from about anything from people who claim not and claim with a straight face not to know what is a woman? And one sport is standing up for women against the trans wokery. Um, and it's a good start. We'll tell you more about that. And I have a breakfast recipe, um, which is kind of like, uh, you know, somebody said to me recently that if you watch those cookery programs, they, at the end, you know, they go, oh, there's the lovely thing. And they go, mmm, delicious. You know, they always, like, they never, ever make a mistake. Well, so not that we made a mistake this morning. We? But me didn't make a mistake this morning. Not so much that I didn't make a mistake. It's all, it's all a we here, Phelan. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't make a mistake this morning, but I, I'm basically, um, I'm experimenting with the air fryer. But, uh, and anyway, I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll talk about that at the end of the show. But it's, I love the air fryer, so as I've mentioned before. Yes, but we're starting with our huge news. Our big new project, which is a true crime podcast in six episodes called Serial Killer, a True Crime Podcast. Sometimes people, a lot, a lot of, I think a lot of conservatives don't really listen to narrative podcasts. There's a whole world of podcasts that a lot of conservatives aren't listening to. So we're kind of, you know, breaking the mold a bit here. And just, creating I just want to say what a true, what a narrative podcast is. So this is a podcast, us two talking, you know, Charlie Kirk, Ben Shapiro talking at a microphone. That's a podcast. But there's a whole world out there of narrative podcasts where you, you interview people, you tell a story. From Where there's music, the, it's the, very dramatic. It's very dramatic. So we have Serial Killer, a true crime podcast. It's the story of the uh, investigation, arrest, uh, tr trial, and conviction of Kermit Gosnell. And we interview everyone. We interview, um, invest you spoke to, we both spoke to investigators, staff at the clinic, crime scene cops, district attorneys, some of the victims, we, and we talked to Kermit Gosnell. Himself. A lot. We talked to Kermit Gosnell a he, lot. He you know, we got, we got these jailhouse interviews with Kermit Gosnell you know we, we spoke to him for hundreds of hours we've obviously distilled that down because he really loves to talk yes. and he loves to tell lies yes. and he loves to spin stories so um but we bring you this and it's we do another thing that we do because of the fact that people couldn't they you know they didn't allow television cameras into the courtroom into this incredible incredible court case it was not televised also you weren't allowed to record there so what we've done which you know at this point this is something that we do a lot we love verbatim so we have taken the actual transcripts of the trial and used parts of it and reenacted them with actors and we also include that in this podcast it's very very dramatic the, the probably the best thing to do right now film is for people to listen and get a sense of what it sounds like we're going to just listen to the promo listen, right now listen to the trailer there's a little trailer to give you a taste of what's in all six episodes my name is Anne McElhenney and I'm an investigative journalist I've never covered a story like the case of Philadelphia's Dr. Kermit Baron Gosnell. I thought that I was among the most qualified and highest skilled provider. And to realize what it was he was doing and how horrific it was. It was a mill. It was a murder mill. The night they came for me, no one told me. I just took to Twitter. I would look at a reporter and I would ask them personally, why have you not covered the Kermit Gosnell story? I mean, you, I think you did take a photograph at one stage, didn't you, Adrian? Yes, I did. I took a photograph. Um, Was that the baby boy? Yes. It's the most upsetting case I ever worked on. I, don't, I never had a case that, that bothered me as much as this. 
please subscribe for free on your podcast app and sign up for our email list at serialkillerpod.com. So what you can do right now to try to access that is, you know, just get your get your mobile phone. Um, if that's how you listen to podcasts, a lot of times people are listening to podcasts. You're probably listening to this, some of you, through YouTube. And if you go to YouTube in the notes, in the show notes, you can click in on the links. In the show links. notes of this episode, you can click on the links. You can click on the links, you know, in the sh- yeah, exactly. In the show notes for this episode, you can click on the links that'll bring you right to the podcast. But you can also go to your phone and you'll see on the screen now, we're showing you the podcast app. And you click on that app and you go to the search button. We'll show you how we're doing that. Is You just type in the name of, the, of our podcast, which is Serial, Serial Killer. Killer. A True Crime Podcast. That's Serial Killer, A True Crime Podcast. You type that in and then hit subscribe. It's all free. Everything is free, but just hit subscribe and those episodes will come to you and you can start listening. And we would really ask you to do that. And we'd also ask you to please share, share with everyone on your, uh, that you know. So podcasts, huh? why, why are we doing a podcast? Tell people. Well, these narrative podcasts that we talked about at the beginning, you know, are really, really popular. Again, a lot of conservatives listen to talk, like listen to podcasts, what they think is a podcast, which is really like a radio show, like our like our show here. It's like a radio show, except oh. for it's on demand. This is a slightly different thing. It's a very produced. It's like it's like what. You know, it, you know, people in the past actually used to have a lot of radio documentaries that were hugely popular in the past and very dramatic, very highly produced. This, this is a new thing that people are doing. So the true crime podcast is huge. It's absolutely huge. Many of you will have heard of a podcast called Serial, which was made by NPR. And you may not know that it was downloaded 400. 450 million times. You might have also heard of a podcast called Dirty John, which was so popular, it became a TV show. Um, Dr. Death. I mean, these, these have had hundreds of millions of uh, billions of downloads now. And particularly by young people. Young people love the true crime genre. They love the, pod, the narrative podcast. So I think this is a great way of getting the Kermit Gosnell story to, a, to, to an millions audience. of young people who no, would not normally uh, know anything about abortion or know the truth about abortion or know the truth of what's going on behind these closed doors and the truth of what's been allowed to go on in the name of reproductive rights. So it's very unusual. I mean, it's really almost bizarre that Kermit Gosnell was ever discovered because, you know, you had this cop, Detective Jim Wood, who was um, working for the DA's office as an undercover narcotics officer. There was a massive problem in Pennsylvania, um, sorry, across the United States with oxycodone and with this doctors. Is, by the way, we should explain. This is back in 2013. If you haven't heard of Kermit Gosnell, by the way, it's not like because it was 1973 or 1933. This is 2013 he was arrested uh, or convicted. Was he convicted? You know, he was. the arrest the was in 2011. Or You know, th- this is... This is last decade, right? This is, he, he's still alive. He's still in prison. Uh, I mean, this is a modern American horror story, a modern American true crime story. So yeah, he was selling these opioid prescriptions. Um, and then the, when they went into the search warrant, they, they'd heard things weren't right there. They, they'd heard that a woman had died. That got Jim Wood interested. But let's hear um, episode, let's hear a clip now about them going into the clinic this is an episode two actually when they're when they finally get their search warrant and they go into the clinic this will give you an idea this is going to give you a sense of what of what this podcast is going to sound like have a listen to this this is the side door that i went in uh he opened the door with a key um because there is a front entrance off of lancaster avenue so agents and officers went there myself lieutenant mcconnell and a couple other detectives came with us through the side door. Now, you have to remember, this was a raid, so we secure everybody so no one can grab a gun and try to harm the officers that are in there. We went in there, I'm gonna guess about eight o'clock at night, and we wanted to try to interview everybody who was there. And there were several civilians inside, there were also several workers inside. And the goal of, of a search warrant is to execute it properly and most importantly, safely. So we, we go walking into the clinic. And the first thing that hit us was the smell. Um, a lot of times when you go into a doctor's office, there's like a medicinal smell. Um, it smells like rubbing alcohol, medicine and all. This place stank. So really shocking, um, you know. I mean, also it's like that's only that was only the beginning. The smell, the, the conditions were only the, the you know the, it was a filthy, filthy place. Cats roaming around, 
um, uh, drug addicts, uh, blocked toilets. And where do you hear what the toilets were blocked with? Um, and also the other thing that really struck a lot of the investigators when they raided the clinic that night was, you know, that the, they noticed that the staff were, were not what you'd expect in a health clinic, that these were not nurses, that these people didn't seem to be qualified at all. Let's hear a little clip about that. Let's hear a little bit about the kind of staff that Kermit Gosnell had working in his House of Horrors. Gosnell's staff was inept, incapable, immoral. They knew what was going on was wrong. They didn't like it. In fact, the senior members of his staff graduated from the back where it was horrible and smelly and disgusting and the hours were long and he never showed up and they were left to clean up his messes. They graduated from the back to the front where they could service the pill providers and work the pill mill and make cash hand over fist working the front door. So there was a strange hierarchy. It was sad and disgusting what they did, but they were willing to do it because he incentivized them with cold, hard cash, and they took their paychecks and left and came back the next day. And that's why, I mean, they, they were broken people. Uh, they, they had they didn't have a moral compass, really. And that's and so Gosnell killed. He taught them to kill. Gosnell kept trophies, by the way. He was a classic serial killer. And as one of the detectives says, he got joy from killing. Um, and he, you know, he kept trophies. One of the things the investigators is they opened a closet in the in the abortion clinic, and there were little tiny baby feet in jars labeled. These were his trophies. He loved keeping trophies. And uh, but how we also how, look at how how he was allowed to kill, um, and how the authorities refused to investigate his wrongdoings because they were told by politicians not to shine a negative light on abortion. And the main culprit, by the way, in this wasn't some radical Democrat. It was Tom Ridge who really opened the door for Gosnell to really keep killing and kill and keep killing. Uh, he's a Republican governor, but a pro-choice one. This is back when Pennsylvania had to be liberal to win Pennsylvania. So many women and children were to die as a result of this political pressure. Let's hear a little clip. Just, I mean, we do almost a full episode on the political pressure to keep Gosnell's... But let's have, yeah, let's have a listen to what, you know, the story on the official neglect that seemed to that really allowed Gosnell to kill with impunity for decades. As the 1970s came to an end, Gosnell was back in Philadelphia and ready to kill and keep killing. The Pennsylvania State Department of Health was at that time inspecting abortion clinics. Done properly, these inspections should have shut down Gosnell. Christine Wexler was one of the assistant district attorneys presenting evidence to the grand jury. So the grand jury looked into evidence about what people who were in positions of authority knew and how this could be happening in a major city in the United States under the noses of so many people and places who knew or should have known that bad things were happening in there. So the grand jury started to look at whether or not there was official neglect. Was there any information or evidence that should have put this guy on someone's radar so that they could put a stop to it? So Gosnell is serving three life sentences, by the way. Um, Following the trial in 2013, he went went to prison. We visited him in prison at the Mm -hmm. time. Um, But as I said, one of the things that's very unusual about this podcast is we have very good access to Kermit Gosnell in prison. And we have as I said, hundreds of hours of tape of him talking. And we have that obviously distilled down, which is very, very dramatic. Um, but, you know, at the center of this podcast, I think, I just are say the something? stories. Can I just say something? Mm-hmm. To, uh, an easy way to get this podcast is go to SerialKillerPod.com. That's SerialKillerPod.com. We should have said that at the beginning. Yeah, SerialKillerPod.com. SerialKillerPod.com. That's a really good way, actually, to to find all the episodes. At the very center of this podcast, by the way, are the stories, are the, you know, the really tragic, awful stories that happened. You know, we have the, the story of Baby Boy A, who was at the very center of this case, and the picture of Baby Boy A that became so central, and so central to, to, getting, to making sure that Gosnell was behind bars for the rest of his life. We also have the story, the very, very awful story uh, of the tragic death of Karnamaya Monger, a Bhutanese refugee, you know, who came to America, you know, after this arduous, horrific 20 years that she had spent in a refugee camp in Nepal, uh, four months in America before she ended up dead. We have that story. Mm-hmm. Um, we also, though, talked to victims. We talk, talked to one particular woman who had been at the clinic and who really felt, you know, she was pretty convinced that she was going to be allowed to, to, to bleed to death. So 
you have all these voices. It's very, very dramatic. I think there's about 30 or 40 different voices in, this, in these podcasts. And we've talked about this on the podcast many, many times. We've said to you, we've got a secret project. So we've been working on this for a year. And I think when you listen to the podcast, you'll, no. you'll, you'll realize yes. why it took so long. I mean, it was a very, you know, it, it's been a lot of work, but we're very, very proud. And we're particularly proud that it's coming out at this particular time when... You know, it's very likely that the Roe v. Wade, that Roe is going to be overturned. Yes. And I think that's one thing. And I've always said this. I've been saying this for years. It's one thing to have the legislation change. It's a very other thing and a very important thing that people's hearts and minds get changed. And the only reason that will happen is if they get educated. And a lot of people are very closed to hearing the truth about abortion. People don't want to know about it, you know, for any kind of reason. They just don't want, they really just don't want to know. But what this does is, a lot of people do really like listening and, and, and following these true crime podcasts. And, and there's so many of them out there. Um, so people will come to listen to this story because this is, a tri- this is a crime story. My God, this is a big crime story. And then they're going to get an education. Yes. About about abortion things that they didn't and, know and things also, like yeah, you know things like you know I think it was very shocking we know that for example the two ADAs Christine Wexler and Joanne Pescatori who you know who tried this case along with Ed Cameron you know they didn't know I mean these are very highly educated people these are people who know the law and they didn't know that the law in Pennsylvania at the time allowed you to have an abortion at twenty four weeks I think a lot of people in America around the world don't know that you can have an abortion up to nine months completely mm. legally. In lots and lots of places in America, people don't know the numbers. People don't know, you know. And of course, to remember the center of this story, women went to Kermit Gosnell's clinic. You know, there were women who went there, women who were eight months pregnant. Women went there, um, and that's, it's an, and, and nine months. We know that for a fact. So, yeah. you know, this is a story that I, you know, I, it's accessible. It happened. We're not making it up. It all was everything was revealed in court. So it's kind of a unique opportunity for people to access the truth about abortion in a way that's very accessible. And, and I hate to say this, Phelan, but, you know, somehow entertaining because yeah. people do find true crime very and entertaining. You'll, you'll, you'll remember the Gosnell case, too, because there was a massive media blackout about the trial. And that was really the first um, social media firestorm that forced the media to apologize and forced the media to cover it. And we cover that in detail, too. So we, we talked to all that. So go to Serial Pod, Serial Killer Pod, dot com at serialkillerpod.com go to your podcast app on your phone uh search for serial killer a true crime podcast um and subscribe you press the subscribe button it's all free all the episodes we're going to release the episodes gradually you know two a week um hopefully you'll you'll be able to hold on for that long and if you haven't, you know, and if any of this is complicated as well, we're going to send out a, a letter to our database explaining yes. to people how to access this. If you're not on our database, go to unreportedstorysociety.com, unreportedstorysociety.com and sign up or go to serialkillerpod.com and sign up and we will send you information about how to access it all really the episodes. Is, it's, it's a great story for you. If you like Dateline, if you like 2020, if you like any of those true crime forensic files, any of those true crime stories, or if any of your children or grandchildren like those true crime stories, which we know they do, this is right up there. Uh, it's not overtly political. It's not. It just tells the truth. And by the way, the truth will set you free if you have people who you want to know the truth about abortion and the truth about the crime um, of abortion, the crime that happened in Kermit Gosnell's clinic. This is the perfect way to get them in and get them interested. So subscribe and it'll just drop right into your inbox. And uh, believe me, once you hear episode one, people people were just clamoring for episode two. We sent it to a few friends and family kind of people, some critics. They just couldn't believe it. It's a, it's a real nail biter. It really brings you in. So it's a great, great story. Uh, and we hope you enjoy it and, and, and understand. And pass it on and, and share pass it. it on. Please do pass it. And it's free. Don't forget it's free. Uh, so... You'll re- on other news, in other uh, news, you'll remember we broke the story a few months ago, actually, about uh, and here's some newspaper headlines that generated. We, we generated these from our piece on the podcast. Former Obama aide unloads a foul mouth tirade directed at Senator Chris- Kirsten Cinema for disrespecting the president. And she did this. They did this on, a, on this left wing podcast called Pod Save America. And nobody on the podcast with her when she said this, nobody had a problem oh, with no, it. Listen, nobody said let's anything. Let's listen to it. Let's listen to it now. They thought it was the funniest thing. And by the way, we have bleeped this out. They haven't, right? Let's hear it now. I have real 
issues with her. They're <laughs> many fold. Um, I believe, Elijah, you tried to stump me, but I did check out CNN before I got on here. And I think in her speech, she talks about the disease of division. Um, also, you guys, she gave the speech as Joe Biden was on her way up to the hill. So anyway, it's the shittiest, grossest, like most disrespectful thing she could have done. I think she's a That's what I have to say. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and do you know who those men are? Those feminist men, those right on men? They're former Obama aides, John Favreau, John Lovett, Dan Pfeiffer and Tommy Beater. And that woman is Alistra Mastro Monaco who was the former deputy chief of staff in the Obama White House. And that is what she said, and that's how funny they found it. Um, and, you know, I think she's a bleep. You know, it, it, it traveled all over the world. It was in the Daily Mail and the Fox News. And the mainstream media never called them out on it. They never apologized. They never defended themselves. They were just, they never, they, they, being leftist never means, means, never, means never, never having to say you're sorry. Yeah, so they, um, you know, they, this is bullying, a fe- you know, under their terms, this is bullying a female politician. It's worse than that. Yeah. And, you know, and uh, so, you know, imagine if that had been said by a Republican or conservative or basically, basically anyone who's not part of this elite pro- progressive protected class. But anyway, Master Monaco, who has this podcast called Hysteria, which is also part of the Pod Save America family, she was receiving messages of congratulations from her bosses and fellow podcast hosts, the Obama bros. And when they finally mentioned the C word controversy, let's have a listen to that. I also understand that we received an audio message from the hosts of another podcast. I think Caroline has, has alluded to that. So why don't we play that now? Aaron, Alyssa? Congrats on your 200th show. 200 episodes. And your friends at Pod Save America. 100 episodes. That's Imagine awesome. that. Wow. That's so many episodes. And look, here's the thing. Over 200 episodes, I think we can all agree that uh, men have only gotten worse. Much worse. Yeah. Much, much worse. So there's there's more to do. Yeah. <laughs> Provably so. We need yeah. at least another 200. No one wields the C word like the host of Hysteria on a podcast. I mean, they've brought it on our podcast too. Mm-hmm. Right, Alice? Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's Cong- nodding somewhere. She's nodding somewhere or maybe wincing. Congrats to both of you. We're uh, so proud that you're part of Crooked Media. And, um, the and funniest, smartest, greatest people we know. That's right. Congrats. That was a really sweet message. Um, and Alyssa <laughs> wielding the C word. Come on, we've moved past that. <laughs> it's <laughs> not incite a- the masses again. <laughs> oh, man. That, there was a smile and a wince at the same time. Okay. Again, it's an opportunity for laughter. Now, they talk about wincing, but there's no regret there. The wince was more that they were called no out. no apology, right? Yeah, no, there's no apology, but they were, it's talk about wincing. They were wincing that it was out in, as they say, among the masses. So just remember, uh, being a leftist means the rules don't apply to you and you never have to say you're sorry. Unbelievable. Oh, and then this is, this is just a little thing, you know. Um, I was in Barnes & Noble the other day and I saw Esquire magazine for sale. Well, I saw Elliot Page, who was, who was a girl. A girl. I mean, on a man's, that on a man's magazine, right? I mean, you know, that'll really get people to buy that magazine, won't it? The euphoria of Elliot Page, you know? Anyway, but up here, I know I caught this. What every man should know about a post-Roe world. They're going to tell you about responsibility. Do you think they're going to tell you about um, supporting women? Do you think they're going to tell you an abortion clinic is not a time machine? You don't emerge from it never being pregnant. You, you know, you don't emerge, the woman does not emerge from it never having been pregnant with your child. No, they... Um, then here we go. What man, uh, what man can expect in a post-Roe world by Hannah Matthews? Good girl, Hannah. You go, girlfriend. All American men should know how to get abortion pills. There you go. Maybe there's something else you need to know as well, Hannah. You know, just, just putting it out there in the interest of a full story. But, of course, you only want half the story. Um, and just as a little another side one, just a question. Do the people who want to tell us about COVID and they want to tell us about climate change, all these experts... They also claim not to know what is a woman. That's pre- that's a great point, actually. Yeah, they want to tell us they want to tell us to change the, our everything about our world that because of climate change, which or are all, COVID, or COVID, we're going to die. We're all going to die. Basically, I think it's always that we're always going to die. Except for the one thing, yeah, something simple like that, like what is a woman, and they can't answer that. Yeah, it's very good. It's very good. It's like yeah, I'm not going to take any information about health yeah. or about until you can define my... a woman to me, because you know what a woman is, right? You know what a woman is. You know what a woman is, but you're not prepared to say it because you're not prepared to fall afoul of the all-powerful trans terrorists 
who are currently running amok and frightening and bullying and destroying people's lives. And that these trans terrorists very often are not trans people. They're uh, they're they're tra- they're activists. And you know, swimming. You know, well, there's some, so there's good news. So we have some good news yeah. in the recent in the recent past. And I think this is. I th- I thought this was a great headline to see, which was basically FINA, which is the sporting body of the swim swimming international swimming elite swimmers, has voted to restrict transgender women from elite swimming competition. So. It's people like Leah Thomas. So yeah, the famous Leah Thomas and other transgender athletes are so going let's to let's just say what that is. Trans, be- transgender my ass, right? Leah Thomas is a man who grew up and went through puberty and got all the, the biological benefits of being a man and then decided and, and competed as a man and then decided in her twenties to compete as a woman, grew her hair long, whatever. Um so she was winning everything by not trying. And basically, you know. It, it's it's good news, but but by the way, it's not it's not an act of courage by the swim the Olympic swimming people who say they're now saying you cannot compete. Transgender people cannot compete uh, in 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 elite swimming, and they're going to have an open category for trans people. Swimming has seen the future, and they didn't like it. This is not an act of courage against bullying, who uh, by those who wish to raise women, but it's an act of desperation as they see women's swimming ending. What 15-year-old girl, what 14-year-old girl, what 12-year-old girl is going to get up? And we know these people, Anne. They get up at 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. In the winter. In the winter. To go to do swimming before school. Yeah. Before school. Yeah. Right? With the promise, you know, that if they did that and if they do it for long enough that they might end up at the Olympics. And now they know. They know from the get-go that that's never going to happen. No matter how many mornings they get up and how early they get up, it doesn't, it just doesn't matter because they can never, ever compete. So, so it's, this is, I mean, this is, I think this is the beginning of something really great. And I think Leah Thomas, um, congratulations, actually. Thank you, Well, no, congratulations because, you know, you, you know. You've made a mark in history. Yeah. yeah, You made it, you made it so apparent that this was a travesty. You made it so apparent apparent that this was wrong that it was unfair like just unsporting yeah. that people even you know ever that basically everyone had to agree so this yeah. is kind of amazing i mean you know and it's interesting by the way the reaction of some of those of some yeah. swimmers like a lot of swimmers are are just delighted and they're welcoming this including the- in, including emily um seabom who is an australian swimming mm-hmm. swimming champion mm-hmm. and she said uh, you know a hundred percent relieved you know she was talking to the daily yeah. mail and she said um, biological women won't have to compete against transgender athletes after yeah. this landmark decision. But, but what's really, I, I, I what's, thought was interesting was, you know, here she goes, it's such a hard topic because no one wants to, she, she says she kept quiet and, and, and everyone's keeping quiet, even though they're outraged by it. She says it's such a hard topic because no one wants to be the first one to say anything because you're scared of cancel culture. You know, and, and this has allowed people to come out and say this was always wrong. Now, some people have come out and said, oh, we've got it. You know, this is terrible. It's not. It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's It, it has saved female swimming. And it's, hopefully it's going to save female sports. And they've given trans people their own... Uh, Olympic. Uh, oh yeah, they're going to have some kind. Of, they're going to have some kind of an open category now. They're going to take the next six months to try and work out how that'll actually work. Yeah, yeah. And I can't imagine Spoiler how many. Spoiler alert! It won't. Yeah, it won't. Uh, I can't imagine a huge, ca- you know, number of people wanting to compete. Well, in that. very interesting. I would suspect now that they have closed off this loophole, there'll be a lot less transgender swimmers. Okay, and we've come to the end of the show. So basically, the last thing I want to talk about is this um, experimental experimental air frying breakfast idea I have, Mm. which uh, uses these really cute little um, poaching, silicon poaching cups, which I bought. I think you fell in love with them sometime in a shop and I saw them when I was... They certainly look like something I would fall in love with. They're very cute. They're very cute and we never use them. But what's really great is those silicon little cups are fantastic for the air fryer. And so basically what I did here and what I... So what I did here was... What you want to put in is, and you can use anything. Look at the variety of ingredients we had here. Like, so bacon, onion, little bit of peppers. What else? Tomato, um, obviously egg and Gruyere cheese and some cream or milk mm. is, basic, is the basic ingredients. And what you do is cook the ingredients first. Cook the onion, the bacon, uh, the tomato, just a little bit on a, on, a, on, a, on a pan. So then you have them all cooked. Imagine them all cooked in those little cups. This is the mistake I did make. Then put the little bit of the cooked material, whatever amount you want, at the very bottom of silicon poaching mold. Yeah. And then on top of that, pour in. You have, I did four eggs with some, like a half a cup of cream 
and pepper and salt and some red pepper flakes and then pour that in on top and put it gently into the air fryer. And I would cook that for about 10 minutes, but it depends on your air fryer. They're all kind of different. Uh, and I, you know, it's very hard to say, but I would say take it out after 10 minutes and it'll come out. It'll come out really easily out of the yes. silicon container. Yes. And it was really delicious. And that's what well, we had this morning yes. outside in the sunshine in California, where we are now reun reunited after a temporary hiatus. Yes. Hiatus. Well, that's not the right word, but one of those kind of words. Well, and why were we, why were we reunited then? Reunited because, um, why? Can you answer that one yourself? Yes. Because for the launch of the Kermit Gosnell podcast, which is called Serial Killer, a true crime podcast, available on all your podcast apps, available, go to SerialKillerPod.com, go you... to the show notes in uh, in the YouTube channel, um, or write to us, get on the email list, and we'll be sending you out details. It's all free. It's six episodes. It's it's a thriller. It's, it's like, wow, listen to that. I mean, it's, what I'd say to people, what I'd recommend people to do is just grab the links, grab the links and put them into your phone in a message and send it to that young person in your life who and say to them, oh, I come across this, you know, I just came across this, this true, crime. true crime podcast because all of the young people. So think about any young people that are in your life. They're listening to these true crime podcasts. So this will feel and sound like just every one of the other true crime podcasts that they listen to. Let's play the trailer again, actually. My name is Anne McElhenney and I'm an investigative journalist. I've never covered a story like the case of Philadelphia's Dr. Kermit Baron Gosnell. I thought that I was among the most qualified and highest skilled provider. And to realize what it was he was doing and how horrific it was. It was a mill. It was a murder mill. The night they came for me, no one told me. I just took to Twitter. I would look at a reporter and I would ask them personally, why have you not covered the Kermit Gosnell story? I mean, you, I think you did take a photograph at one stage, didn't you, Adrian? Yes, I did. I took a photograph. Um, Was that the baby boy? Yes. It's the most upsetting case I ever worked on. I, don't, I never had a case that, that bothered me as much as this. Please subscribe for free on your podcast app and sign up for our email list at SerialKillerPod.com. Yeah, one thing I would want to say to people is there's nothing horrific in it. Right, it's 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 it gets rough at times, but um, and we do give warnings if we think any of the content is a little bit rough. But you know, if you've read the book, if you've seen the movie, you know that we're very good at telling the truth, but but making it palatable for people to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, so, so that's serialkillerpod.com. dot com. Um, serial. The podcast is called Serial Killer, a true crime podcast. Let us know what you think. We're dying to hear. So uh, that's it for this week, Anne. That's it for this week. Thanks Thank so you. much for tuning in. And leave us, leave us a comment. We love the comments. Okay, bye. Hey.